zoek je voor mijn vrouw is, die zie je die niet. Uh, Josette? Ja, maar ze is anders. Of anders. Oké. Okay. Uh, goed, uh, daar heeft hij een leiding gemaakt. Jetzt gibt het Spagen. Kurt en Susan. Oké. Zo, ik wil het hier aanvangen. Ik kan spreken in Engels, perhaps beter. Op Duits, bitte. Engels, bitte. Dat is goed, dan heb ik het Britse op Engels gereden. Oké? Maar ik spreek het Platt Duits. En zo, dat zou ik niet zo kunnen hebben. Oké, heute würde ich auch den Selection für den schwarzen Rolle von Royal Black Wolves. Und das ist, ja? Ja, dann können Sie dann die Bauern, die zwei Finger habe ich immer nicht gesehen. Und ich, wie gesagt, das würde ich für das Selection for the Schwarz Black Holes, Broad Black Holes, and so the next slide, please. On, so, pretty is in following these topics, uh, Markham, this is the following uh, things I'm going to talk about. We need an uh, definition given, ambition, history. It's really, uh, and the history for this should be the efficient in chemistry, uh, testimony that the very demand has on our the, uh, Survival tests. We should be occupied with the instilling science on the bond tests. On the argument on the resultate on these tests. On the then we just not care waiting on the raw bombs. On the raw black holes. We should watch the whole way. On then finishing any guy a recommendation given. Ah, that's just my problem. Here, the right and wrong one. And so then the next day, when she may not understand, then can't you say I can't explain? Okay. Okay. English. Okay. Ah, I didn't. I didn't do both there. The slides are in English, and so I'll give the German translation. So, I want to give you the interesting situation of resistance and tolerance. I like to define what I mean by resistance and tolerance. Resistance is the fairkite than itself on the numero von Brose by Spilsen of an Ebenes Halton. In other words, it limits the population. Tolerance is the highest is the ability then like my last choice then the shadow is from my limit. That's why when of English you can have a lot of mites if your colony is tolerant. You can have a lot of mites, but then they are not damaged by the mites. And actually, I don't try to select for mite tolerance. Because I don't wish uh, bees that are tolerant to mites. I need just to select your niche knock at tolerance. But I'm going to kind of be in heaven, the tolerant gegen mites in. The mites couldn't deform wing virus for a bright and broad. So yeah, we try to select for resistance and not for tolerance. Because uh, if you have uh, tolerant bees, they mean you can have a lot of mites that can perhaps be infected with the warm green virus. And so a little bit of the definitions there. And so when people talk about uh, tolerance uh, zoops, I'm, I'm talking about uh, resistance zoops. A little bit of difference. Okay, um, next slide. Uh, I had the possibility when I was uh, young studying at Ohio State in entomology to work at the laboratory of Walter C. Rothenbiller. When I was uh, young, I had this day, Merkley's card with W. C. Rothenbiller, some uh, arbeiten as a student technician. Uh, 
my job was to count scales of American folk with my rabbi. I'm an institute for the Zalen von der Amerikanische Fallbrüt, zum Zalen. Ganz interessante Werke. Und in dem Keller, 1, 2, 3 bis 1000 und so was. Uh, the, uh, and uh, Rothenbüller uh, was the first to show that uh, uh, the behavior genetics of cleaning could uh, affect uh, resistance. Uh, uh, Rothenbüller had gesagt dass durch den Verhalten könnte man auch resistance gegen verschiedene Krankheiten wie den American Public haben. Und für das hat er ein Hypothese von zwei uh, Lokus uh, gemacht, uh, das heißt uh, uh, Uncapping und Removung. Und uh, jetzt uh, ist das uh, und dann war es im 64 war es nur zwei Gene, jetzt ist es ungefähr 100 und so Gene. Und ich würde auch gar nicht sagen, dass wir nicht angefangen Genetics zu studieren, zu studieren an der Universität. Wir hatten gerade DNA äh, gefunden, das war in äh, 61 oder sowas, und dann hatten die was aus Medikantier gehissen, gefunden, aber die wissen nicht, was das macht. Und äh, äh, ich bin, äh, ja, ich muss ein bisschen weit weg von dem Mikrofon, weil die Leute, sonst können die Leute nicht schlafen. <lacht> okay, so, äh, next slide. Uh, when I finish my, I'll try to pull this. Normally I don't speak with the microphone, but uh, uh, I'll speak with the microphone. Uh, the, uh, I'll just hold it right here. Uh, away there. Okay. Um, I'm, loud enough, I'm loud enough with that. Okay, is that bad? Okay, let me just put the microphone down here. Okay. Okay. That's what happens when you eat honey. <laughs> okay, and so uh, when uh, when I finished uh, my PhD work in uh, Obruzo, finished my doctorarbeit in Obruzo, fertig gemacht hat, then in this Kuntenak, Südfrankreich, my Frans von Toulouse. When I finished my uh, PhD work, I went to southern France and uh, uh, started uh, keeping uh, queens. And uh, during that time, uh, the mite came into uh, France. Zwischen dieser Zeit, the Royal Melbourne is in Frankreich eingewandert. And so uh, nobody knew how to treat. Niemann weiß, Niemann wie handelt. And so then, I was good to contact with uh, Wolfgang Ritter from Freiburg, and Jacques de Poulot de Lille, and and uh, Oberuzel having done a series of uh, testing and testing knocked off for sheena productive. Uh, when the Vormite uh, first came into uh, press, nobody knew how to treat. And so uh, I volunteered my bees to test a number of products. And I imagine if I would ask you to hold up your hands uh, and just hold them up uh, and to see if you have used any of these products. How many of you have used Fallbex? Raise your hand. Nobody here. Oh, that was before your time. Yes. How many of you have used Apatol? Oh, that was before your time also. Kerosene. <laughs> okay, keep your hand up. Uh, Amitrats. Amitrats, uh, that's uh, the... Uh, okay, and then uh, better than uh, Fluvelinate. Uh, Apistan. Apistan, bio roll, probably nobody here. Yeah? So, I see that from the beginning, most of you were treatment fee, beekeepers, anyhow. And <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, so then, I'm not going to say that happened really say that that's where it's really some zucked for resistance. We had, I, let me just go down here. I'm not used to standing here in a place here like that. Um, I've got somebody to push the buttons, so. <laughs> right. And so, um, uh, during this period of time, we had tried to find a uh, resistant bees. Boom, that happened there for soon. Being in focus of in the resistance gagging the Milvan hat. 
Um, so we tested with the uh, group on, uh, uh, let's see, next slide please. Down next step. Next. Next, yeah. Uh, or I think there's one before that. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, this one here. And so in the 1990s, um, with Dr. Russell, we tested bees from your way in the Nancyka yarn. Uh, happened to be being here from uh, uh, your way, uh, the testament, I'm assuming so. Your way and being in the steps. On that, and then having to send us uh, these uh, bean, uh, we have to Chris Fisiga Fitzuk from Tri uh, Monaco. We made a short term experiment of three months, you know, in uh, biology, three months, and the standpoint of evolution is nothing. <laughs> and uh, we found no differences between the three different lines we tested, we went to, whether it was the star, uh, star lines or the Uruguay bees or the carnelians from Oberuzel. These were tested in, uh, uh, in uh, Toulouse and in Poland. And um, at the same time, we had started another group of testing here with uh, bees from Tunisia. I went to Subway uh, summer. Happened to be in a group of um, bees we tested uh, from Tunisia. Uh, these are tested at the uh, Mission Langer Guinard, Mission Swaitao Fair. See, this is the Alte Spruck Island in Bible. That's the sign good to buy spiel. You know the old expression that to go fast, you have to go slowly? This is an example. Uh, in this test there, uh, we found that uh, there was differences in the counties. And these are, if it's okay, here, how do we send that? Let's give Dr. I an entry sheet in the resistance. However, we had resistance. Nishner in the group from Tunisia, Avraup, the Carnolian group. Of, okay? And, and this uh, test here, we saw that uh, not only the bees from the Tunisian uh, showed, uh, showed the resistance, but also the Carnolians. And so this was an indication to me that we could uh, select. And that's why in the Hinweis for Nish, that's where Clinton Doc was marking. At M nine in the test in creation gemacht mit Bushler and Montian mit dreizehn verschiedene Gruppen und observieren wir die letzte in dieser von dieser Woche aus dem Sterben. Die Emke hat mir gesagt, ja, wir haben die nicht eingeführt für den Winter und aber so ist das Leben. And from this, uh, from this uh, international test uh, in uh, Croatia, uh, our colonies were the last ones to, to die out. But uh, as a man that was keeping the bees said that they died because they were not prepared for the winter. And it uh, wasn't because of the broad. And then because uh, at the same time, uh, because uh, I was in France at that time, um, and the Schenigan Agreement was in operation, uh, we were allowed to import uh, bees from uh, uh, from the states, the USDA from Moscow, Queens to Toulouse, and then we shipped those on then to uh, Germany for testing. That's how the beginning the Schengen Regelung Yeah. Because back in the Schengen Agreement, couldn't be then legal amount to import here. And while that's legal for Frank Rice Bar, then bar that's not legal, that's why they're not Deutschland some chicken. Now, while Weiser couldn't in the end, that's Deutschland not directly import here. And that's why it's not for Simmer Gans Good to have it, while it's a. It's not for Simmer Gans Good, you're going to suck a legal to mine. And, uh, Okay, so next slide, please. And so here's for the the Deutsche Sparkigas in the. We uh, this was a test we did at uh, Oberuzel, and uh, where we did not find any differences between the uh, different uh, lines of bees. That's why the Fitzgerald off the Uruguay bee, but we're kind of two sheets from the bee and poker bee sand hat. However. I mean, where the Fitzuksu Chris, but actually, the reason, one of the reasons was was because the uh, 
uh, the experiment was too short. And uh, now if we would have uh, done this, we would have uh, uh, let it run for a couple of years or more before stopping it. But sometimes in science, you wish to get a quick answer, and it's not always a quick answer, that's the best answer. Haben Sie eine Wissenschaft und eine schnelle Antwort haben, aber es ist nicht immer gut, eine schnelle Antwort zu kriegen, man muss die Zeit nehmen. So, next slide please. So, these here are the uh, results of the, uh, from the test here with the uh, Tunisian bees here mapping, no difference. And then after that we had a lot of uh, paranoids died out. But we had one of these colonies, colonies here that went to continued on to the end of the experiment. Actually, I think the Carnica was the final uh, survivor in between all these colonies. Biggie, he said here that said man here the I'm on fingers to find one up there. Can you teach it? We did we that's why I opened the Uruguay experiment. I would then not care. But then we the Meister Carnica focus Sandowski Strobel. Und äh, aber gibt es äh, immer eine, der geht hier bis zum äh, Ende und das war die letzte Ausstörung von die Verzug. So, that means that you can have uh, in uh, different races of bees, you have resistance, but you have to uh, take the time to look. If you don't take the time to look, you don't see anything. Das heißt, dass uh, in den verschiedenen Rassen uh, müssen uh, sie die Zeit nehmen, um uh, anzuschauen. Wenn sie die Zeit nicht uh, nehmen, dann können sie das nicht machen. Okay? So, oh, das ist, uh, and so then happened, wir diese Arbeiten hier in der 2004 publiziert, uh, ungefähr uh, elf Jahre nach dem Anfang der Verzug. So, wir publiziert das. 2004 in the American uh, Bee Journal, about 11, 11 years after we started it. Okay, next one, please. In uh, 1998, while we were waiting for the uh, bees in this uh, test to die out, because every year we thought the one Carnolian county was going to die out, and then we could stop and publish the results and that, but. It just didn't die out. We, not that we were hoping that it was going to die out, but a small county, we said, well, it's not going to make it through the winter, but it did. Uh, 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 and so in, two, in 1998 in Bremen, uh, we coined the term bond test. In, in the R, uh, uh, whoop, uh, in the R, uh, uh, in our Nazi cabin, we had a job, uh, bond test, the mark, that says, live in, uh, live in that diet, live or a stable, stable lesson. And for our statistics, the results are quite clear. Either the colonies are alive or they're dead. Now, we get talk for these statistics, it's like this, it's a gun sign fact, and they're living in or they're starving. Good, when they live in the, I say, when these guys good, or they live in the dark. And, uh, uh, but, uh, so, and then next we go. And so at that time we said that uh, in the future, now this is in 1998 in Brendan, that in the future we would be able to work with genetic screwdrivers. It's happened to be, and this is that we talked in the Zuko to Britain very much genetic or shrub in the ZR and our Biden. But we can hear I struck out all swollen. So we must feel rural resistance, and that's our problem. And that means we're being in a bound, we be vulnerable. And this is the side part of Spanier pipe dreams. Ever? Yes. Next to side. Yes, this is Smirgish. Yes, this is Smirgish. Just going for this one. And so us. So I think your first niche movies far is quite the movies. What uh, was not possible 20 years ago, today it's possible. And I'm certain that in the next 20 years, there are things that's going to be possible that we don't even know about. But to be able to uh, utilize these tools, you have to have screen your genetic uh, material. That's us uh, in the Zucup to read it. I think it's like even the technique that if you're producing crinin, we have a kind of ED, what's that's written. 
Aber um die zu benutzen, muss man den äh, Substoff haben. Und so, das ist äh, ein Handarbeit. So, next slide, please. This lady, by the way, will probably get a Nobel Prize. And like, these are probably Varshanka and Nobel Prize uh, speaking for your Harvard. Uh, so, here in, uh, this is one of our uh, uh, paint storage yards in Chile. That's the students on Sermon's Krinigan Lager and then uh, Chile for the uh, the chicken of the Harvard uh, the Krinigan and uh, Home French and uh, Poker. And here, the folk here get this. Uh, and each one of these uh, colonies here, uh, these are queen storage colonies, and each, uh, back there, uh, other direction, please. Uh, and uh, in each of these colonies here, there's uh, two dukes there, so you can give an idea of the size of the yard, just multiply everything by two. We always have to keep the grass cut down because there are fires all the time. We must remember the rasen good that he shouldn't have that that's why we have got that fern but we can need fire. It's very good. Let's keep it for the fern and we stay for the rasen. Mm -hmm. Okay, next slide please. So, why did we start to select for disease resistance in Chile? It's the sex that we just have to be in focus in uh, Frank Rice and it's have to uh, be in focus in Chile. That uh, that's why it's that uh, yet it's this uh, uh, strength on yet um, in uh, chilly uh, winter to garden while it's here more Europe is uh, filling it so men can that's why now our bike the market for yar that's why I will so so sorry men can that's why now also feel for failure for yar market be early uh, when you're working on the two continents you can. Uh, Gives you a chance to test your ideas out. Uh, you can go twice as fast and make uh, your errors faster. So, the, uh, and so in 1994, we had a problem with the European public in the yard. Fair noisy cotton growing the sherry cotton mid European fall group. That's why so stuck that's when during the beginning uh, standard gigantic thing we couldn't just reach them. Okay. Was so the European power grid uh, situation was so bad that uh, we uh, when we go into the uh, V yard we could smell it. And so we have to run conservation. And uh, so this had a uh, negative impact on the strength of the hives used for pollination. Also, in addition, the colonies were aggressive. And in two years time, we started to select for hygienic behavior, and these problems were eliminated. So we're having uh, these are sure kind of the uh, European uh, fall group. We haven't uh, undefined some select here for uh, Eganish uh, Fairhalton and then Zwei Yar, Hattenberg, these are from your ladies. Okay, and then for Sir, Sir, uh, Sir, uh, yeah. then having the rest of the Shemir Gusein, I prefer Varsos, Stark Industrial, Kern Industrial region. Um, does anyone ex ex understand what I'm saying? First state the eater was a saga. Good vibes of his first says to yourself, Snish was a saga. It's good as you mean. Okay, so next one. So here's the result of the fun uh, chili. When is China all saga, Maka? Murti is in the virtue of the hidden heaven. Man, it can serve, it can serve to the rain of this, that's can sign that says squatches. So when I talk, I like to have the uh, hard data behind it because I can say anything, but if I've got the data to back it up, then uh, I don't hesitate to uh, make comments. If I don't have the data, then I try to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> and uh, and so I just saw that's what happened here uh, in uh, 1994, we tested uh, about 483 colonies. Actually, there was over 500 colonies, but uh, there we always have cleanest colonies. We have them here. Yeah, uh, over 500 focus uh, tests, but I was kept them around to get the Maslow sin, and so they mustn't ask for And so this is a uh, this was a hygienic uh, behavior at 45 hours. Uh, most of the time, uh, most of the colonies were not very hygienic. 
Uh, but uh, we pulled out the best 115 counties here in 1995, and we tested them in, uh, in 19, we tested them in 1994. And from those, we took those that were the best hygienic uh, 24 hours, and we used those as beating material. Now, uh, that's why that's here, I can build in. Uh, uh, that's where here I'm on. I'm going to so the one is here in I was here down here for the Sir Guinness one. Uh, then Hatton, uh, 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 then Hatton, uh, Hatton, Bill, and he's a group here, the, uh, uh, Spitter, uh, the best of Hooper Foods and the tested. Well, for me, Hatton, really spits and folk, uh, the, you know, Gans, I'm fat selection, kind of complicated, uh, uh, work. Very simple selection, not uh, difficult to do. Even I can do it. So if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, okay, next slide. This is one of our queen uh, reading yards here. We were using these are starter counties. Uh, I see he needs to sleep. <laughs> uh, and uh, what we do is we set the hive uh, starter colonies up in rows of 10, and these here are different queen mothers from our best breeders. And so at the same time as we're using these colonies for producing queens, they're also producing uh, uh, drones for the mating yard. Here at this mating yard there we have about 120 uh, uh, colonies for producing uh, cells, and. Uh, and then about three, a little bit over 3,000 nukes for, for the mating around it, just typical uh, situation there. And uh, the, um, uh, the biggest out here is for uh, the uh, poker, or uh, the Kragen, uh, uh, the Indian Zendal, the Makin Zonin, or the, the, uh, the, 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 Muslim Navism, that's been the Aina folk having, or the Pop Hudson folk having, the uh, Arbitus to sell them. You have to realize that if you have one colony, or thousands of colonies, what you have to do for the colony of bees is the same. And uh, just that sometimes when you have more colonies, you can use different uh, equipment than if you have fewer colonies. But the, the, the basic work is the same. And, uh, okay, next slide, please. So these were the cloak uh, colonies here. We have uh, we close off the entrances here behind, or this is the entrance here, and uh, the bees go in here to the top. And uh, next slide, uh, please. We uh, make them quit this with just a metal, a sheet of metal. We mark the visalos, we sheep and dust the rind. So it's why I call this in the visalos. And these uh, colonies here, we uh, just uh, uh, put in a sheet of metal, metal there, and that they become in two seconds or queenless. Uh, so we can, uh, in a very short time, we can make 120 colonies queenless. And so it's uh, uh, okay. Next one. And also another thing we uh, do is on the top we put a five-frame loop. You can, you can go back to the for the time frame uh, nuke, because it's, uh, we have the, the regular queen down here below in uh, two deeps that are, uh, she's wearing, and then we handle this because it's lighter. <coughs> and also, we find, Brazilians found that you, when you confine the bees into a smaller spot like that, they make heavier queens. <coughs> the Vatican uh, Brazil, the Funda does. Let's see, uh, this is a system. Uh, we listen with the full frame in the public nook. The back in the Krinigan vegan mirror. So, on our the vegan mirror, I did this is some handling in this big piece of field, and so we can then with our right last year. So, next to this. So, yes, Fred is on Kang and then there's a Viver selector in for. Varroa resistance, and I'm going to get in talking about selecting for varroa resistance. Uh, next slide, please. <coughs> so there are a number of questions to ask before a big meeting, a selection 
slow down for disease resistance. It's, first of all, why don't you wish to stop chemical treatments in your hives? Um, secondly, under one condition, should you stop treatments in all your hives? You can start the uh, Vensiain uh, Selection Program on time, Seminain Far Fogging. Sure, so our emergency niche to offer in the care chemistry should be handling it. And under us, we dealing in with the, uh, these are uh, be handling in uh, stuff here. Okay, so next slide. There are, uh, I skipped here, I feel like I'm going to wrong and select your niche for resistance. So a lot of reasons why beekeepers do not select for resistance. We decided it takes time, skilled labor, and organization. Difficult to calculate the economic value. Uh, you have a short term problem of economic survival. We gotta live. Uh, cheap chemical treatments exist. Uh, then you have the manana effect. Uh, Zinger Mafi told me, don't do today what somebody else can do tomorrow. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and nobody else selects and so should die. So should die. Uh, so, uh, then we have Vigi Sakir, the Kershinia Gundabarang, the Lorca, Nisha Lakir. I skip Phil Miller, Gunda Atasa, or Vigi Sakir, and I skip the manana effect. Anisha Nishmakan Horde, Vajim and Andrew Morgan Martin Khan. Oh then uh, okay, next slide. So there are some real good reasons why uh, beekeepers should select for disease resistance. Let's get panic against Gutu Gunda Varam uh the immigrant salt uh select here and for resistance. First of all, chemical treatments are not free. They cost time and money. Because that, chemistry should be handling as you should try, that's cost the talent to have help. Then she has self-smart, that's a sign of his life. I've been seeing other folk and having them listen to the way to be done, these are about smart. So you must listen, you feel that's cost it to be handling. When you're running a, a certain number of counties, if you have other employees, you have to know how much it costs them to to, to work. And uh, for instance, I asked Jerry Pullman in uh, Canada how much it cost him to treat his 15,000 colonies uh, one year, and he said it cost me 10 to $15 per hive to treat. That's over at $10 a county, that's $150,000 every year just for treatment. So after Jerry Pullman, uh, he thought uh, he feel that cost, how can he cut the sign that? Fumson thousand focus we have on that is our composition. Zane on the Fumson dollar pro four. That's a super hundred from six thousand uh, euro per year. And there's some hat we have on there. He is John Martinus. Also, uh, the uh, uh, bees uh, become resistant to uh, the disease and thus become resistant to the chemicals. You have chemical contamination and honey in the bees flax. Uh, you have a negative effect of the chemicals on the colony fitness. Um, as we, we were seeing over the years, the chemical control is busted. We get sucked the crank hydrogen on the broad uh, uh, resistance to then uh, fishing chemical. So you bring in uh, uh, chemical in the air, honey and beeswax uh, fitness. On the uh, colony red niso fit. On the Viver Gesen over the yarn, that's a genetic uh, control is to possible. Okay, so next slide. Next slide. <coughs> so, how do you select for uh, raw resistance? So, we select the command for resistance. Uh, first of all, uh, Select bees that fit your economic needs. There is still a uh, selector in bees in the very <laughs> economic. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, there's no use to have a varroa resistant bee if uh, you can't make money with it. So that kind of is very kind of varroa resistant bee and to have it, uh, but it's kind of, it's kind of guilt upon for the end thing. Well, the master learned this in this business software and uh, the, the, the broken gel, this, uh, the, 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 the
But, um, so you need to use simple tests that give fair results with a low labor input. And you have to remember, selection is a process of elimination. Uh, so I said, you must have made a test that we noticed the, uh, the, uh, the iron traction. Uh, and that's the best time to make it, and that's a uh, light uh, interpreter. On the midst of many arbeid in Mergis. And then she must in the rest of the Agni section, that's just that, that's just a process for men. The schlecht folk are very nimmt and they're behind the best. That's just. And this comes here to ourselves. Next slide. So, how do you keep your bees resistant? Well, be behold that you're uh, being in resistant. Uh, you uh, bee daughters from each resistant bee. You spread these daughters out over all bee yards. And uh, what's important uh, that you have different daughter groups at the same uh, bee yards to maintain your genetic uh, diversity. And you must maintain mite pressure. You need mites. You don't wish to get in a situation that time and sometime where you have to go out and buy mites. Mites are expensive. <laughs> and, uh, the uh, biggest act that's the most in the again from the factory market from the resistant Canadian. You have to use the most in the factory from the region of the and the beans in the market. Also, really, here. Here we are in Kernigan, Quentin order so us, and so you may have Kernigan toxins you have invested. And uh, for sheet that talk to group, uh, I'm, uh, I'm sub a bean into that, so that's the uh, in, uh, in Kennedy, she diversity of that hat. On same was in the Emory, uh, a geek and look in the building, having some selector, kind of building, kind of selection. Right there. So next, okay. So, uh, we, uh, over the years, uh, uh, we knew that beekeepers were not going to use our bond test. And we are in very recent that they might say, I'm going to do an Eastman's or bond test of the Nielsen. That's his game fair, not his wife's room. On then having we are in Andrea test in Zweitaus and Dry in Ljubljana. The uh, bonds accelerated test, the bat test, uh, and, uh, and, th and this test here, you just hang in a frame of uh, highly raw infested brood, and in your colony you wish to test, and about six months later you'll see if it's uh, alive or not. But then uh, that test, Hank Van Eintrack, I in a range in fun, hook infested brood. We have an Emir Fitz, it grow up for 170 years. Or the Alan Insects, but not the same man, or these are four kinds of resistant factor on that niche. That's Muslim very often, so we listen to our niche, the Garagi Fun. That's just the truth. Fur of our hat and very folk have met fear and noise in Gura for 100 million. That's why they put all the Zeiten. However, yes, this is a Zeiten report. We had to, as you read the stuff, but this is a bad test because we couldn't find the amount of Gura mites that we needed. Well, then in uh, 2009, having read a soft bond test, well, I just want to see how I understand the point of view as an anchor. Then, I was written now for the boss of the market. And so we had developed in uh, 2009 a soft bond test. Thank you. Uh, and so we can go to the next, next slide. So hope for the DD softened that's just the experience. I hope for those that are trying to sleep that I'm not keeping them <laughs> awake. Uh, first of all, uh, there were Ingemar uh, Fries uh, and Goblin and to us we were running one test and our goal in these tests were to see if colonies could survive mite infestations without chemical treatments. But then uh, there are Ingram Marquis, Omotisha, we had in uh, being in uh, Toulouse and Gulf, and we had to be in 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 Gulf, and we had to be in
hope I haven't created the uh, the above management behind them. In, uh, in Toulouse, we use an open uh, mite population, commercial beekeeping conditions, and we had mite exposure to uh, from other beekeepers. And uh, to this happened where Boca and the we have them to Normala by Normala commercial vegan uh, conditional mite creating a zoo. On we had in uh, Melbourne from uh, Andrew Imprint, the standing uh, rain cone. That's how we had a good uh, mite uh, trip. And they got an experiment uh, that's far off in Ireland. On uh, that's far in uh, those mite population. That's how they had this of your Melbourne from Andrew Fokker. On uh, that's far near uh, uh, the bar uh, varnished. Uh, that's for near survival and for the lefty or the uh, stuffy. Uh, answer answer a test here. Uh, uh, very very happy most near near Fokker. Marking from was overlaid and. Uh, and I uh, got in the bars near a brand of survival test. Kind of, kind of, you see that we met us can man uh, fine tune uh, in the selection for it. Small differences in the way we go about testing, but uh, not where you can uh, fine tune your uh, tune your selection. Then. So next slide. So. Uh, 1998, I decided to stop uh, all chemical treatments in my colonies. So why was that? Uh, in uh, the year uh, 1998, I was going to off here and uh, all the behandling in my focus. I said to show them the year sex on 1998, I was going to offer and she didn't win with us for the transition uh, I'd already started in uh, 1996 uh, uh, to think about stopping treatments, but uh, uh, decisions like that uh, have a lot of economic impact, and so finally in uh, 1998 I decided to top, stop treating. Why? Because I had uh, went to a beekeeping meeting and I had the impression every time that I treated with the uh, uh, amatrids, this was, we would inject this to the colonies, that I would have headaches. Uh, so that's just, uh, you just know when it's uh, be handled, uh, I had this, I hooked us this, I had a cup smirching be picked up. Or the habits he got us by their psychology. I thought this was only psychological. However, and I know we try from we point there, yeah. And you get having more gets that good for having grad that be handled. When that's the same man in mirror, but then Eisenbahn really that M cup for each first leg and that. And and then I know we had all gets that that's here, all the cup schmerzen and so weiter. So then I have just gedacht, vielleicht ist es nicht psychologisch, vielleicht ist es chemisch. Um, we, like I said, I went to the uh, one beekeeping meeting like uh, here, and did these inspectors, and they somehow just treated, and they said also they had headaches, and one fellow said it just like somebody took a uh, eisen uh, bar and hit him in the head. And uh, somebody else mentioned the same symptoms, and they were similar to my symptoms, and so I thought, uh, good, uh, maybe it's not psychological, maybe it is physiological. Because we tend to, you know, your sicknesses and that, your psychological sicknesses and that. And I know that I'm working with chemicals, uh, so I can say it's that and that. But uh, when you hear other people say, no, we have that and that, then you start to make a difference. And so I calculated how much it would cost to uh, buy a new brain. <laughs> so we, we feel uh, uh, that uh, calculate a couple of we feel that that because custom really I have no experience with that. Okay, we feel can manage that uh, and we feel custom dying to hear. Yeah, I have a man out here kind of play. Oh, for these, then it's up the calculus we make that's good. All the online folk are all stirred. Print is human and no, I have pack out from Wienen from Italy. Kaufen, have I no idea who in print is this Kaufen? And I'd make a calculation that if I did dissolve the counties, 
Uh, I would always buy a package of these from Italy, but I could not buy a new brain. Uh, yes. So for that reason I stopped. Uh, you have just given the explanation why the conventional beekeepers think a little bit strange. What? <laughs> you have just given the explanation why conventional beekeepers really think strange. Oh, well, maybe they got sources to brains that I don't have. <laughs> Before we go on to the next slide, please. Next slide. So in 1998, uh, we uh, uh, stopped our treatments, and we had uh, we were working with two gene pools, uh, one gene pool of 268 families, and then later on in 2002, uh, 60 hives for my employee Maria Wolf, and. Uh, we were working uh, the colony under, under commercial keeping conditions, which was selected for queen and honey production. And we made the colony increase uh, from the uh, uh, colonies from the best colonies with the lowest mite infestations. And from time to time, we would exchange genetic material between the lines because, as you know, you're always going to step on a queen or things like that, which I've done. And so it's good to spread your material out. Uh, and uh, then we made certain that we maintained the uh, mite pressure on these so that we could select for low mite phenotypes. In other words, select for bees that uh, did not have high mite uh, mites on the bees. <coughs> and, uh, uh, and so, so next slide. Uh, so after several years, then the results were that two thirds of the colonies died out and one third survived. But I was told that I was going to lose everything. Uh, not a uh, had his side uh, from the folk of Fernoin, I wish that the Ein Drittel on the day. Aber die Leute hatten mir gesagt, dass es würde alles für den. Aber ich habe es gerechnet, um diese Zeit zu setzen. Over 400 folk of that's been engineered. 10% of the people in the folk have been half of them could design genetic profile on mine. But I calculated that uh, if I only had 10% survival, then I could uh, run a genetic program. Uh, so I decided to take the, the risk. And like I said, I calculated that worst comes to worst. Uh, if I did lose everything, like everyone said I was going to do, uh, then I could always buy package bees from Italy and get back into queen production again. Uh, so in life you have to take calculated risks. And we thought they said to have to rest in the engineer. Zane put sent from the folk that overlived the Curtis and a suit program market. And we said 30 percent, so that's the other thing. But I'm also feel pretty good. I was about to say this part of the suit program. So next slide here. So now I'm going to bore you with some data. That's pretty easy. I'm going to resultat this again. This is we're having a stitch to regret it. Resultat and so then our source that's by me. That's why that's why in the Milben in up in the brute here. That's the adult the Milben, Doctor Milben, or the. Uh, Unavex in the uh, immature Melbourne. Or the knocked in on these sides here, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, ones here at the top are uh, adult mice, southern mice, and immature mice. And so we uh, the, the, let the colonies develop over the years, and so the mite populations develop. They have any folk down in per year. Uh, uh, so that's the uh, population from uh, the Melbourne uh, right and Victor. And then as I saw, then ab 2002, then we decided to have the two Drittel from the folk area, the us, the Sturbanet. As I said, uh, we let the mite populations develop, and after 2002, we lost about two thirds of the colonies. Uh, and then when we uh, we tested again in uh, 2008, you see there's a, a very strong uh, shift in mite populations in the bees. Then see down in uh, sorry thousand ot materials uh, of that, but sorry thousand ot. Then you hear that's a I mean, stuck a uh, stuck a from uh, if you feel a bigger here and see if I'm 
Here it's the best year in the uh, Linea, so I'm marking. And uh, from here, out the Linea, and, uh, and so on. And so that's why it's been the GANS uh, primitive method in Crazy Selection. So that means that uh, with very uh, simple methods you can select, but you have to take the time to do it, and much more you have to write down. Not everyone likes to, to, to write, but of course, if the county's dead, then you don't have much to write about. It's, uh, it's dead. And, uh, and so, and what you see here is that the, here you have colonies that uh, most of these colonies here have under less than uh, five mites per uh, uh, hundred cells in the group. At that level, you, uh, if you're treating, you're losing money because you're causing uh, chemical damage uh, to your queens and uh, same thing here on the, the daughters here and uh, on the immatures and so on. So next uh, slide. So, uh, I forget if I'm talking in English or in German, but whatever. Uh, here's the uh, mite population on the uh, bees in 1999. You see we had a very wide, uh, wide uh, dispersal of uh, mites up to uh, over 20 mites per 100 bees. And then as colonies were starting to die off, then this uh, point up here is, uh, is uh, shifting downwards. And in uh, 2002, we still had uh, some dispersal there. But then afterwards, when uh, the, uh, most of the colonies died out, then we had very low uh, mite levels on the, on the bees. Uh, here's five, five mites per 100 bees. Uh, they suck that as an the yarn uh, uh, vinegar uh, uh, in total and Ach have here here another fünf Milben pro hundred bean. So as far here we know, so as normal by the spits of two Milben pro hundred bean. And that's is not so few. And so next slide. So next to it. What's interesting is we have an arc for hygienic for hog and select it. And a man found on your focal of our mirror hygienic as in the day. What's interesting is that uh, at, uh, I'd always select for hygienic behavior. In 1999, our colonies were actually more hygienic than in 2008. So that means that good. Maybe hygienic behavior plays a role. But it's not the only thing that's involved in our resistance. As I said, the hygienic effect for hot hawk, for that it's built on a roller, but it's just not the only thing. The hygienic effect is good when the European fowl brood or the sofa seven, then uh, it happens to be running a trick at them. Okay, so uh, next slide. So here's some more statistics. Why well, should you have your uh, numerance to send? Here's some more statistics, and I know everyone likes to see numbers. So. This is uh, red here indicates that at the beginning, my populations were uh, significantly uh, developing. But then when you compare, compare uh, my populations from uh, 2001 or 2002 to uh, uh, 2008, you have significant drops in the mite populations. Here, for instance, on the adult bees, uh, in 2001, you'd have seven mites, and in 2008, you'd have only one mite, uh, et cetera. Here, for instance, on the immatures in, the, in uh, 2000, in 2001, uh, uh, you'd have 46 uh, immatures to only one uh, immature in 2008. And so you see these uh, ratios are going down, and uh, the statistics of all this is uh, uh, very significant. So this is statistical uh, uh, proof that, that, that these values are, are, are well there. And, um, how many beehives? Hmm? This proof is about how many beehives? Uh, this year, uh, or here on this, on this one here, uh, you have the N number here is uh, 64, right. here is uh, N number, here is uh, uh, 29 there. Yeah. And, uh, but what's important, if you like statistics, you see the differences in the medians. 
because that yeah, gives yeah, yeah, give you an idea. Stuff, yeah. uh, but I won't go into the statistics here because probably most people couldn't give a, a cow's tail about uh, statistics. Fred and Nisha uh, keeping their statistics again, but you might still like to hear Fred and Nisha interested in statistics ever, or eventually you won, and uh, it seems out. Um, so, next to Bill. And so, from, uh, from this, uh, we uh, concluded that our colonies, uh, in each of these gene pools, uh, there was a high line resistance in each gene pool. This was evidenced by the fact that we had low light populations. Uh, and, uh, and so, this indicated to us that genetic uh, selection was possible. We thought that uh, here it says, so that's almost grabbing the stock that's good for having uh, uh, furniture statistic analysis having a uh, conclusion be marked that's for having a uh, whole resistance from the Melbourne on uh, that's as far we have now uh find a Melbourne population when that size that's a as for emergency uh, genetic selection on Sumatra. We're talking that's the focus why science is mic tolerant. We're saying that the colonies are probably not, not mic tolerant. Because uh, if the colonies are mic tolerant, their mic population should have remained the same or even in peace. As I said, we're saying that's the focus of our science is niche uh, mic tolerant, while some of uh, have the several million from Melbourne or the North Mirror. But, uh, uh, also, we had uh, uh, very few systems of the foreign wing virus. All kinds of very sort of vinegar symptoms of the uh, deformed wing uh, virus. So, next one. Everyone's starting to sleep now. I see this fellow there sleeping behind there. <laughs> I'm waiting for my. No, but the, the fellow here oh. before you in the last row, not you, you're. <laughs> And so in 2015, uh, we published the, all these uh, results in the Journal of Agriculture Work. Research with the Yara Zotas and Funsen having good these of public here. As had that's just 20,000 mark, he cost it some public here, so that's a good price to all the imprint. Uh, and so, when the mirror is fast, my convert, where they haven't proven the design as a strike, and then the vice is that Mr. Gelb or Bill for a good uh, asking of themselves. And the man uncooked and have your Gelb for now. <laughs> <laughs> and I could say it uh, cost us uh, pretty close to 2,000 euros to publish this, so it's uh, available to everyone. Uh, so, if you get a chance, look at it, and it gives you an idea of how we. Uh, function and like I say, if you don't look at it, that means that we've wasted our money. And so, uh, so next slide please. So, why have most beekeepers not adopted the bunker? So, why am I having the mice to impure in that? Nicht für zu den Bantest zu benutzen. Next to you. Well, the bond test keeps you very busy doing nothing. <laughs> the bond test, uh, the, uh, the mice is like, how can you get it? And it's our site, and uh, so the mice team couldn't just not get it. We can say, I love it, I love it. And like I say, the uh, bond test, uh, you just have to wait because mother, for us it might seem like a long time, for us, like, uh, I think that's what I feel it's like. However, I'm not sure. I'll see some part of you. But, uh, so anyhow, so, next slide, please. So, for that reason, I said we developed the Bonds Accelerated Test for these are good and hot and red and, uh, that's the same as I'm going to throw them to your hands for us. You look there, you see it's a red title, that's uh, a marketing marketing. Uh, okay, here's the next one. Uh, so, this is where we say we put in highly infected uh, frames of uh, worker brood into the colonies, and then after uh, uh, about six months, then you can uh, see whether or not your colonies are resistant. We have these are here in, uh, on the Vingsak, in Slovenia, in Slovenia, and after Monday, uh, 
gemacht hat. Aber jetzt können wir diese Test nicht mehr machen, weil wir graben den Milben nicht. So jeder hat seine Forschungsbaum und muss es jetzt in der Everyone has a mic bomb, we can't use it. Which we can use it. We don't have that population of mics. So I have to cry when I'm saying this. So I say alligator tears, but it sounds like. So next one. So there are some problems with the bond and back set, as we mentioned earlier. On the bond test, you're going to have high losses on a very good uh, basis until tolerance or resistance is here. And then for that test, it's too fast to permit selection for long term mechanisms of resistance. We can talk about these tests here, get the short kind of these tests and bond test. Uh, man, we read him a few of our talk, Foku Granat. We zip to the side of Carolina, this man and better on the resistance where tolerance uh, thin it. But the bad test uh, gets too schnell. Well, uh, this is a good uh, test on six months. And uh, uh, as get uh, resistance and uh, uh, resistance mechanisms, the the broken yarn some some functioner. And so as a new method and bad test be nothing. Uh, then uh, then the lang fishige uh, uh, selection technique can be finished nothing. And so, next uh, builder. And uh, as somebody mentioned today, I think there was a, uh, uh, the biggest problem for beekeepers is fear. I can lose everything. And they got to, uh, they got to, uh, uh, for a year, of course, uh, fear is kind of all for them. Oh, that's it, I might have to address it. So, next to the uh, bill. So, we must have a technique finding that uh, the Imker inverted good uh, be nothing. As, as must have uh, ein fact sign, billig uh, sign, or uh, risk low, if that's risk low sign. However, as must have, uh, must from all the stuff, and it's too close to the side, it must have. Uh, Man, we should fill in guy a kind and then the armor from the side of Mutu. Um, when it's always the market, he's going to do this. And uh, like I said, with this uh, test, we had to find the test as acceptable, acceptable, acceptable to beekeepers, simple, cheap to risk, but all uh, be emotionally comforting, like in your mother's arm. Of course, that depends on your mother. <laughs> so, next one. So we developed what we call the soft contest, and we talked about that in Mont City in 2009. But then we have then the, the has the soft contest, where the imprint the niche for work the Ben Leish, where beekeepers that are not crazy like me. Uh, so next time. So what is the soft contest? You do the. Uh, Expensive, uh, time-consuming uh, testing on a limited number of colonies. <coughs> then the challenge selection where, for instance, in Chile, we test 500 colonies for pollen production. Then we test the best 100 colonies for high-tenic behavior. And then the best uh, uh, 40 best high-tenic uh, uh, colonies we would test for growth. And then we run a bond test on the 20 counties that have the least amount of mites. As I said, that's a fun the soft bond test. Uh, then uh, uh, all of these second day cost of uh, Saxon survivor, Redeemer of and Kleiner Menge and from Fokker Gimak. Uh, so I still uh, in Chile. Uh, Haben wir immer sehr viele Pollen produziert. Uh, haben Sie schon, haben wir neun, neun Tonnen gefrorene Pollen nach Pollen geschickt für den Hummel sucht. Und so für uns, es war ökonomisch wichtig, uh, uh, Fokker zu haben, die uh, sehr viele uh, Pollen machen. Ah, eigentlich, eigentlich. Ein Volk, der sehr viel Pollen einträgt, häufig trägt das auch sehr viele Honig rein. Aber ein Volk, der trägt, so I feel the honey grind is not unbedingt a good focus for the pollen. Uh, so when you select them for a pollen, you can see that I start to select them for a honey for a uh, And so I said, so we're, we're having some nice feel in uh, uh, 500 uh, focus gate testers. 
for uh, Holland Production, then die beste Hunde haben wir gegängig für Hauptmann getestet und dann haben wir die beste 40 von die, von die Menge von Rohr und Melvin getestet und dann die 20 Stück äh, Fokker ungefähr 4 Prozent, äh, die, äh, die keine Melvin hat, so wenn ich dann haben wir die lassen einen Bandetest gemacht. Okay, next slide. Okay. So one thing that's very important is after uh, uh, the roar comes, but before the bunches, I have a socket there uh, that's basically uh, just uh, for the back and back and the roar itself happen. I was for the the bunches on time. Okay, next to go. You need to spread out your uh, breathing material. You need your rear daughters and you clean the maximum number of hives. You utilize as many different <laughs> breeder lines as possible to minimize the effects of inbreeding. You put the daughters in all your VRs for this selected drones for future meetings. And you exchange uh, genetic material to other beekeepers in, uh, in case you uh, lose uh, your breeder line. Uh, these are the uh, the most in uh, uh, your genetic issue stuff of your Brighton. See, you must factor in uh, from this uh, market or the, uh, uh, or the so feel the so feel the uh, linear in the Vimergis. So that's the vinegar uh, zoot tablet, but that's just the shirt cut with the with the zoot. Odd arc is the soil as it's realistic, that's the vexel and methanol and imprint your genetic material. It helps lighter, I think, against Schrenner, Kernigan, and Gequitch to meet in stock miles. Glücklich, so I said, had to my colleague, uh, Mir Volk, the genetic material from these Kernigan. So it's Kernigan and Vida Zurok Kernigan. I have a song for it as a fill on. But as I said, that I had. Uh, uh, it's always good to exchange the genetic material. I uh, once I was working with a hive and I killed a very nice queen with a hive tool. But luckily, my colleague Mirabel had this genetic material, and so I could go back and get the uh, original genetic material. If I hadn't spread out my material, then I would be even crying more today than. Uh, <laughs> okay, next one, next slide. So after you do this, then you run the the bond test, uh, and you you got from the uh, bond test queens with the lowest amount of mice. You monitor the borer levels in the group before feeding, and you count these nine in the bond test, and then you stop chemical treatments in the brood and your borer infestations uh, are less than five percent. You don't need to do this test every year, but just from time to time because. You have to remember, you're selecting for, man, the first thing you're selecting on this test is for production um, and resistance and that comes along, but you, so you need to maintain pressure for uh, uh, production. You can talk to this, I find these are 20 green again, the see, we need some nuts on the took the we can get rich of current again to produce here. Or then, we can get when when the root when the vinegar has four percent infestation, it's up to four percent itself. Then can see half from from the side to side. Then we the whole and see these are test. So that's what we so understanding that production and so whatever select you and half get resist for resistance. So oh, next, uh, next slide. So, what are some of the advantages of soft fun test? Uh, everyone here is, understands. Okay, no questions. Okay. Uh, nobody's sleeping yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, the advantage of the soft fun test is to let you use uh, natural mating. You don't need any special equipment. And in the fun test, you have. Increased economic performance, you have hygienic behavior, which you re increases your resistance to brood diseases such as European farm root. You have limited losses, and you're saving time and money on treatments, and it's comforting because you have 
fewer risks. Uh, so, so, so for uh, for most beekeepers, this is what I would suggest if you're not if you don't wish to get into taking risk uh, a lot of risk, try this and it's uh, it's not that difficult to do and uh, I just say go ahead and do it. So, uh, Marcus, that's a threat to me to hold it or did I? Nine. Nine? Okay. Next slide. So, like, like I mentioned, uh, I mentioned in uh, Chile, when uh, we came to Chile, we had bees that were very aggressive, that was stinging off. And I uh, remember Concha, my colleague, he'd go out to the bee yard and bee gloves and uh, suits uh, for. Uh, you know, we're going to fight against the, the monsters that we had in the bee yard. So, but uh, after uh, two uh, years of uh, hygienic uh, uh, selection, we just simply eliminated any colonies that stung. Not going to fire, when we were in full cat, we'll that saying, good to folk, far away in each. When it's stitched, then right this way. And that's, we haven't given it, we haven't given it, we haven't given it, we Set in the final from that one. So that's a technique we use to select for uh, uh, gentle bees. Now the next slide, uh, the other techniques in Sweden, they use uh, a different test for selecting for new bees. And, uh, and everyone uses their own method. The main thing is you're comfortable with the method that uh, you utilize. For instance, uh, they told me these were in very, because you see there's a sting there, a sting there, a sting there, so you can count easily to see how aggressive those bees are. What, what we do in Chile is not always the same thing as like we do in Sweden or in uh, Germany. Next slide, please. So, the uh, question is, what is the cost of producing a vehicle? Uh, the Fargas, I mean, we feel cost of us on a, on a soup critic and some luck, and boss is good, man, can say, yeah, boss, and that's, that's, and that's ever, that's cost of the girl. And, uh, oh, there, the hoon sold to her blood and buy her dog cancer. Oh, that, you know, someone's like. Uh, that's, uh, so, uh, our metunsu technique, uh, wissen wir, we feel that's cost of. And so with our techniques of uh, breeding, we know exactly how much it costs us to produce a breeder queen. If I asked you how much does it cost you to produce a breeder queen, or how much does it cost you to treat, probably not too many people would be able to give an answer. Don't ask me how much it costs to treat because I don't have that information. That's why I have to ask other beekeepers that uh, treat. But, uh, so next slide please. So when you're uh, covering the cost for producing a breeder queen, you need to, uh, uh, there are three different things you need to calculate. You time it takes you to prepare for your testing, uh, the time it takes you to drive between the bee yards, and the time it takes to count in the, the bee yards. Okay, and then also you need to know how many number of breeder queens that are required. Like I said, when we do the testing, we know how many times it takes to do it. 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 Uh, by the way, uh, always produce more breeder queens than what you need because first of all, you're going to, some of those queens are going to be killed and then with the extra queens, you can sell those to other beekeepers to reduce the cost of uh, your breeding program. We can talk to man, must you remember more folk that are not going to be able to Okay, and so here's an example from uh, 
uh, where we tested uh, bold out 20 breeder queens from uh, 430 hives and we selected them for pollen protection, hygienic behavior, and low varroa mites. So here's time uh, uh, Vice Bill Hover uh, selected Dante uh, Zucchini again for uh, uh, pollen protection, hygienic behavior, and low varroa. Next one. This is what a data sheet looks like. Here's, here's the uh, uh, data sheet uh, states that. Uh, here you have the, uh, for instance, uh, here you have uh, your test location, hive numbers, the amount of pollen that's produced, the amount of bees, the amount of brood, honey, hygienic behavior in these uh, colonies, and then any remarks here on the side. And uh, just using simple Excel table, which most people have access to. Um, we can talk to you, have men, and uh, uh, being in standard, and uh, newer fund, and uh, folk, you feel pollen, if you mark that, or the uh, region from being in, brood, honey, or then, again, if you feel hot. So next slide. Uh, so here's what it, what you do is for each uh, V yard you just go through and, and do a sort from the uh, from high to low uh, production. And this year, for instance, it's uh, these colonies here. We we uh, use colonies that uh, were already highly hygienic. So we took out, uh, put in the hygienic colonies, and then afterwards we went to the uh, different bee yards here, and we took the three to four best colonies in each of those bee yards there and used those as breeder colonies. No simple, uh, very simple uh, selection work. You just uh, choose out your, your best one. You can stop here, up in here, uh, uh, and then uh, you can poker. Uh, uh, did I just tell that to you in German or in English? <laughs> in English. In English. In English. what? Okay, it makes no difference. Uh, so here uh, uh, we, uh, from those we uh, selected out, the, those that were uh, very hygienic, most of them were 100% hygienic. Uh, then we went to um, pollen production, for instance, this colony here had this three times the average of the yard. This one here produced nine times the average of the yard. And so you just go through and you pull out the best colonies from each of these groups there. And you take them into your home location and then you start feeding from those. And then you spread that genetic material out and run all of your colonies. Next slide, please. And uh, just a little bit more thing here is uh, what I just said here is uh, you have your, your best colonies there, and uh, these are the best from uh, uh, 400 and some uh, uh, 20 colonies. Actually, there's actually more than 420 colonies because you always have queenless colonies, and you can't, uh, and so you have to follow up. And so, it's, like I say, it's not, not very difficult uh, to do. You just have to be willing to take the time to write down the, uh, the values there, and that, that's it. And so, next slide, please. This is what a reading uh, uh, sheet looks like uh, for uh, reading materials. Uh, uh, when I, for instance, this, uh, we were testing in 2013, and uh, so this is, uh, I go down to Chile to do the genetic work. Uh, so before I leave, then uh, we pull in the colonies that are uh, the best uh, colonies, and then go from there and so, uh and uh, like, like you see here, most of these colonies here are already very highly hygienic and, and then these colonies are also tested for uh, bromide production. <coughs> a very, very simple selection pool and you don't have to do a lot of complicated stuff. So about the kind of complicity of technique, uh, 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 so I'm like, uh, I'll write in the emergency. The next slide. So here's uh, uh, so here's how much time it costs us to produce a uh, pollen breeding uh, queen. And uh, what's interesting here is uh, on the bee yard, uh, uh, for instance, we're testing uh, uh, colonies that uh, uh, 
took us to test at 420 counties three times. Uh, uh, it took us uh, about 40 hours of uh, counting in the field. Okay. Driving between the bee yards took us about 35 hours to drive almost as much as counting. And uh, when, uh, and so that gives a total of 74 hours of, uh, for the uh, testing and uh, driving. And then to, uh, so that comes out if uh, uh, you divide that uh, value by 20, the number of reader queens that you're wishing, that comes out of testing time of 3.73 hours per reader queen which is reasonable and so uh, for just testing for production. Uh, that's high steer, that's a, you saying that's the Bidusen Pass, even so feel it's some foreign tuition dependent standards, uh, Zagnish and dependent standards we test. And on the Venci Dutch, there's a nowhere from we got Königin that's you haven't worked it and come to us and not be fair, try to come and see in the Arbeit for Königin. So oh, next, uh, next to the bill. So uh, testing for hygienic uh, behavior. On the first day, we have four people because we're going through. We're testing uh, for uh, 100 colonies there, and it takes us uh, 2.5 minutes to open a colony of bees. And uh, doing that. 2.5 minutes, we've collected a bee sample, we've collected a brood sample, we've inserted, inserted the frozen brood into the colony, and it all, if you take 2.5 and multiply it by four, four people, that's 10 minutes of uh, labor per colony to, to put in the uh, uh, samples. Then the following day is that uh, we only need uh, two people, uh, one to open the hive to hold up the fame and the other one to, to count. Uh, and so, uh, and then what's important is that since this is a hygienic test, 24 hour interval, we need to count on the second day uh, the same time you count on the first day. If you had a problem the first day, then you have to, for instance, I had a fellow from China with me, Lee Jenka, he wasn't used to working in the bee veil. And uh, on one of the tests, and so we had to take a pause of 30 minutes, and so the following day we took also a pause of 30 minutes to continue on. On the uh, side here, we have a block I hope we're in here and Brian and helping it in the bridge again. Before you're anointed, as far as in the Arbeit in Togo. Or then the site that I'm talking to here, why do I get some functionary? Well, it's a very good thing to understand. You were in the same way, I'd say, you know, it's a lot of weird shit. Here we have 326 students in the interval functionary. Okay, next slide. Uh, sorry, may I ask you a question? Sure, why not? Where do you insert the the frozen breed. Okay, that you'll see in the following in the, the slide after. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's where we're reflecting, for instance, a sample of the bees. Here's where I now, I now, I'm referring to 100 from Sig Bienen. And that's where the, in a sack, with a stuck paper, and we're benutzen that, I know, we start with a normal pencil, a graphic pencil. Bleistift. Bleistift. Nicht eine, nicht eine Tintensacke, weil wenn es, wenn es weiß, wenn es weiß wird, dann geht die Farbe in alle Richtungen. Mit dem Graphite, Bleistift, dann bleibt es immer. Es weiß, weil ab und zu muss es das Held gegen das Licht halten, um zu sehen, gut, wo war die Nummer und so weiter. The, uh, when, this is a sample of uh, bees here, about 250 bees, and uh, on the inside here is a little piece of paper, and we write the hive number on the uh, on the uh, piece of paper, and then we put it into the freezer. Next bill. Yeah. Uh, so here's how we put in the uh, brood sample. Uh, we just take uh, the frozen uh, brood sample here, and put it down to the uh, comb, 
and then uh, uh, trace it out with the cutter. We move, we move the piece of uh, comb that we cut out, put it in the freezer because we analyze that in the fall of the year outside of the bee season. And then, uh, then the piece of uh, comb here is uh, pushed inside. We suck for Oscar keeping the cool, uh, cool trunk on Spader and Herbs when they side have it, kind of been in our bite. Then it's scared when it's not going to mark it to sell it. The Swedish market has this price and it's going to be in the sky. So next, uh, next group. So here's a, what well, looks like when the county is uh, hygienic, uh, pretty hygienic. This isn't completely hygienic because there are still a few cells there, but uh, they've cleaned out those uh, cells very quickly. Here's the Anvil of Goldie Focus. So, not to give you an idea how much it costs to count the uh, mites on the uh, bees in the group, it takes about an average of one hour per county to do this uh, count. Twelve minutes to count the uh, burra on the bees. 45 minutes for the grow on the group. But remember, you're only uh, doing this on a lower number of colonies because uh, you're not doing it on all 420 or 40 colonies, it's just only on, on the best colonies. And so you're doing your more expensive testing on a reduced number of colonies. I want to be stuck for the Aurora often being in a Bark bands of Pinete on and the Gran Lambruta, um, uh, then adults, uh, factor in um, immature from them, cost it to be fair, from from third segment. Now, one little technique is that when you pull these root samples out for counting from the freezer, if you count them directly from the freezer, then you can go a lot faster because the wax shatters. If you let your wax sample warm up, it's going to take more time to count. Uh, we got a lot of counting to do this. We can talk to Svensi here, Bruden, Profund, and Cool Trump, Neiman, that I'll probably have to advise for, but it's ambition to warm up, and then it's dark to feel longer to the wax from the wax market. When it's so cold, this then brush the wax so and then keep my shitting. So next, uh, next bill, please. So uh, water, uh, we uh, we put in a half a jar of uh, water with one uh, drop of uh, soap, and then we just shake it. On the Melbourne of the bean and we're we bring the bushing on to every minute and I know I cook and find cycle. This mirror about something is very stupid to show. Or then, uh, uh, then uh, have a beer, uh, then really that's a uh, shoot. But then here is, for instance, this is a, a folk numero eins, when beer at an environment exists in the heat and in these are So that's a revision, uh, that's a knocker, that's when beer shoot on. And so back to when beer the manga from grow up, have a beer that that's in good sense. Uh, and here, like I say, with the, uh, uh, on these labels here on the top, uh, you have a hive, hive number here. And uh, for instance, this here is hive number eight. And then you have the number of bees that were counted, there were 316. And so then afterwards you can, uh, once you have the number of mites you have, then you put it in percent. Very high tech uh, testing, you know. Okay, next one, uh, next slide. <laughs> Uh, and then, so what you do is, uh, how many of you don't have a honey strainer? Do you feel if I need having kind of honey gas uh, seed All right. Uh, for these, if it's took to rock and I and honey seed And so then, we can see that you're not far in uh, uh, rain. Uh, just use a double honey screen. We use one that's made in Germany. And uh, the bees uh, remain on the top, and the drawer goes through. 
and then we uh, hold it up to the sun, and then we count the, the mice. For instance, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mice, and so on. do like that. A little technique to uh, count easier. You uh, put that on a sponge or a towel to pull out the water. That way you can uh, count the mice easier. I kind of invite the fancy that's been nothing. Something that's off on a hand tool. Or oh, we do that, so we're taking dicker, and then the butter cakes, and then uh, uh, sea balls, and then can many milk and dust your skin. And so to so many, our bike machen, the milkies. Twice as good for the the gas unit surface, the our bike machen, we'll serve it. It's up to the gas ball, and the surface. If any girl bike, that's to bless her. Okay, next, uh, next slide, please. Mm -hmm. And so here's a high technique uh, material we use for counting the root. <laughs> a piece of uh, wood with a piece of uh, paper on it. When I was a student in uh, Ursula in 1968, I bought a pair of tweezers that I still use. Uh, when you're a student, you don't have a lot of money, but I did invest in a good pair of uh, tweezers. Uh, and then you have uh, uh, some water there because if you, when you're pulling the mites out, if you have a mite on the end of your tweezers, it's difficult to get the mite off the uh, end of the tweezers. For that reason, you have a cup of water there, and that way you can see if, uh, uh, later on you can double check on the amount of mites you have. And then you have a, uh, you don't see it here well, but you have a sponge because before you go to write on your paper here, uh, Often your hand is sticky, uh, so if you write here, then you have it's sticky over there. It's difficult to write, uh, and so uh, use a sponge for that. And the sarcas can sign this situation not on top up here with the zelen for five hundred zelen I have in adults, doctrine on immature mites, and then can men. That's all soft shaven and uh, go next to Bill. Oh, next, please. So here's what it looks like when we are uh, going to. We just uh, go through the comb and uh, break off roads and, and count like that and uh, pull it out and turn it around and go to the next one. And like I say, that when it's uh, very cold, then you can go very quickly. But uh, it takes about uh, half as much time to do it as if it's not uh, cold. And uh, they, uh, and so I count out a hundred cells, and so I have the uh, the uh, my values in percent afterwards. So I don't have to do any uh, mathematics or anything like that because it's all in percent. Then there's some like then uh uh I need some uh still have hundred cells and then have a thousand percent. So next to uh, so here, for instance, you see a mic, one calling on the mic, and so it's always nice to get a hand on. And uh, normally what we do when we have people visiting us, uh, uh, we pay them one cent for every mic they find. Uh, and uh, I've had PhD people come in, spend a whole afternoon, pull out 12 mics, and so I say, where can you get somebody with a doctor degree working for four hours for 12 cents? <laughs> you got to be cheap, you know, you have to know how to, uh, and I prefer that the people go into my colonies and pull out the samples, because if you do it, you believe what you see. Now I put results out there, maybe they're, maybe I'm just lying to you, maybe I'm the biggest liar that you ever met, but if you go, go in there yourself and do it, then you believe what you see. And then maybe you'll believe what, uh, what I talk about. But I say don't believe, do it, and then do it for yourself. So, next slide. So, here's what we are in the middle of our seat. Then, I'm very, the, Here, so my school here, we're in the middle of the doggy funding. Und da hatten wir da auch ein anderer Milbe gefunden. Und diese Gruppe hier hatten wir keine Milbe gefunden. 
you're not here there, uh, you need to put it itself, so then I'm just going to fish you if you want. Uh, this is so hot this year, I'm, I'm on a uh, senior to the price, I got with Andy Fagan, and helps uh, Brian Johnson, your uh, senior moth keeper. These are here, here by senior Zenith and Morgan, and then I'm uh, senior to Brian Johnson, Brian Johnson, Strategy, with us, and so a shrub right here, you know, it's off uh, Kirshima and Notinson. Uh, all of it, Andrew Saka, the shrub that's here is off. As a similar investor, a miniature shrub in the house, you should be noticed in the shrub. So it's best to write maybe a little bit too much than not enough. And so next, uh, next uh, slide here. Uh, so, uh, this here you can't see well, it didn't, uh, this one came out. Uh, so for those of you on your side, you have to look here. Uh, here you see all the little squares here. Uh, so what we do is uh, we develop the, uh, with the Excel program, a uh, simple program where we have on the, on the computer screen the, uh, the uh, sheet that goes in there. And then when we have a mic, we just mark it in on, on, this, on the different, uh, different uh, whoops. Uh, and you just mark it there, and then these are added up automatically on this side here. And if you have less than 100, then it's calculated in percent. So that way you make a lot less errors in your calculations because when you're transcribing data, you're always going to make errors. Uh, I thought that you can, uh, you can reduce these errors. Now a little technique, uh, when you're having some, I always have people control my data when I put it in here because I know I'm going to make errors. And uh, sometimes to do a control on those that are controlling, I'll expressly put in the wrong value in on, on, the, uh, on the one sheet. And so if they don't, find that wrong value, that means that I've got a problem because they're not con controlling correctly. And we can start to finish our control market, I have to enter the control that is at seven. And I'm going to mark it here on top to avert the beginning. Or that I say, I'll divert that is a fairly good and half of it. And the addition in half then, that's how you start to have some end result. Okay, next to the slide, please. So the time it takes to select one breed of queen for disease resistance, uh, hygienic test, uh, since we're only uh, working on uh, 100 counties, 50 hours of work, for our counts, 95 hours, for a total of 145 hours to, uh, for our, uh, the disease test, or it takes us 7.25 hours <coughs> per queen to uh, test. Okay, uh, so uh, anyone else has to go to the toilet? Uh, uh, so to test, and so this gives us how much it costs us to that for our resistance. Okay, next one. So the selection time for our pollen collection, 3.73 hours. Is it resistant 7.24 hours? So about 11 hours to select a uh, uh, breeder queen. So we're, like I said, you multiply that by uh, 20 breeder queens, so about 222 hours. I'm speaking too loud. <coughs> okay. Uh, sure. <coughs> Maybe a break because the people here might have to go to the toilet. I see you jumping up and down. We can in the cafe when the cafe is there, then it's also a half hour. When the cafe or 20 minutes, then we must have a bit of time for it. It's just a bit shy when we have this half-fits, but we have the opportunity. Not so often that we have a chance to see it. So we can take a break and come back later. When the cafe is there, then we have a half hour. So 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 we have a half hour. Ja. So kann man das weiter genießen, aber so wird schon ein bisschen, äh, geht schon ein bisschen drauf, ja? Ja, okay. Danke. Oh ja, wir haben das Bede. Gut, ja, danke. 15 Minuten. 
We have to go a little bit faster. You don't have all night here to listen to me. Uh, you've got other people to listen to also. And also I wish to listen. And so if I'm talking all the time, I'm not reading so much. Okay, so we're going to talk about Vora Bombs uh, versus Vora Black Holes. Uh, next slide. Uh, in 2016, uh, Mia McNeil wrote an article on uh, comparing the world bombs and the uh, world black hole She did a very well balanced article on it and showing that we have some things in common. Okay, next uh, slide. So, what is the Bora bomb? A uh, Bora bomb is a uh, uh, colony that produces a large amount of mites before it dies out. So, next slide, please. This is a typical description of a Bora bomb. Um, if you press a little bit on the button here, as it explodes, then uh, you have a mite fallout, and uh, then. Uh, uh, and so you have mites spread all around. Uh, next slide. Oh, what you see now, you see the fallout coming out of the mites. Of course, this is a very nice description for those that are on, uh, are uh, worried about mites and that, but uh, on the counterparty, you uh, have the, uh, uh, another possibility. So, next slide, please. Uh, if you wish to see what a mite bomb is, go to Randy Oliver and uh, he's got the, an example here where you have 100 mites, put in 100 mites. At the end of the season you come out with uh, 725 mites and at that point it crashes. This is typical for a uh, mite uh, bomb. And, uh, uh, so next slide. So what is a uh, black hole? Black hole like, oh, is a county where more mites go in than come out. So next uh, slide, please. <coughs> this is the raw black hole. Not, not really a mite, but this is uh, yeah, more mites go in than come out. So next slide, please. And so I uh, took uh, Randy Oliver's uh, model and I plugged in the data from our Hive 434. Um, when you put in a hundred mites, then at the end of the season you only have six mites. So this is the case where more mites go in than come out. For me, this is the definition of the uh, raw black hole. And so raw black hole is a county that is mite uh, resistant. Okay, next one. Um, uh, I actually like raw bombs. A lot of people are afraid of Varroa bombs, but uh, uh, you can use Varroa bombs to find a uh, black hole. Uh, so you need mites, and a black hole is a good is a Varroa bomb is a good place to find uh, mites. So next slide, please. Uh, going back to uh, some data from the uh, that we did with the Intibisa experiment. At that time, we had uh, uh, results where we had colonies that were. Vora bombs that we have up to 94 mites per 100 bees. But in the same bee yards in the other group, we had Vora black holes <coughs> that uh, those colonies were actively uh, recovering mites. We knew that because we were measuring uh, mite fall on that. And so with that, then, uh, uh, and so at the same bee yard, uh, we had uh, the Vora bombs, but they uh, were helping us also locate the Varroa black holes. And so this is something where you can put Varroa bombs to, to good use. So next slide, please. Uh, okay, this is an uh, example here, but for instance, in 1999, uh, this data, those uh, B0 are probably uh, uh, Varroa uh, black holes. These here are probably Varroa bombs. So, well, you, you probably don't realize that you probably have data that you can already uh, utilize to separate out. Here, these counties here are probably broad black holes, and here it is. We don't have many uh, any bombs here. So, next slide. So, I'm going to give you some advice for resistance uh, selection. Next slide. Uh, for instance, don't be in a rush. Island and violent because you're selecting for both short term and long term mechanisms of resistance. 
Next slide. Uh, you need to net, let uh, natural selection operate. You need to maintain the genetic diversity in your uh, colonies. Um, you need to maintain mite uh, pressure and at the same time select for production because as I mentioned, if your colonies are not productive, then uh, you're not there to uh, uh, keep bees just for, uh, well, I like to keep bees for honey. If they don't produce honey, then uh, for me, uh, I don't eat bees. Uh, Next slide. Next, uh, so and then, as I pointed out earlier, you need to calculate your economic cost, your queen breeder or breeder producer, cost how much to produce a breeder queen, cost how much to trust to treat your colonies. And in those costs to treat your colonies, you have to calculate the cost of the chemical damage to your queen. For instance, one bit of advice that you have a problem with swarming uh, in a year, you should stop. Uh, Queen cell production, I think, Kumaphos, uh, I think if I remember, kills uh, queen cells. The Kumaphos with cloud and so that's how you treat against mites uh, during your swarming season to kill off your virgin <coughs> queens, or kill your virgin one stone. Um, and then you need to calculate the uh, economic impact of the mites between treatments because if you have bees that are not resistant, we're going to have a buildup phase, we're going to have more deformed moving virus than that between your treatments. And so uh, even if you if you treat once a year, then you're going to have a one year buildup. You don't, uh, and so you have to calculate this economic impact also. Uh, next slide. You have to remember on the bond test, you have high losses at the beginning, but there's less uh, work. I continue to do the uh, bond test all the time because I don't have to do anything else. I, take the colonies that survive from the winter, and uh, that's it. In the soft bond test, you have lower losses, but you have more work because you need to go through and uh, do counts and things like that. Some people like to work, other people don't. I'm one of the cases of somebody that likes to do the least amount of work possible. So, next uh, slide. Uh, I'm not going to say the only thing you have to fear the sphere itself, these are actually pretty beautiful animals. <laughs> and, uh, when I count, I just put them on my, uh, sometimes on my thumb in rows so I can count. And, uh, Where so, did you find those? Uh, those are from, uh, some of my, some, from some of my colonies, and that's probably about all in the year 2003. But uh, those four mites are long gone now. So the next slide. <laughs> As I mentioned, this is uh, Randy Oliver's uh, Varroa model. I've been playing around with his model a little bit. The main thing I want to point out is this is just part of his model. So see, with his model, you can plug in your own values on it and make your own predictions. And uh, so this is, uh, uh, and for instance, you can calculate your mic values and things like that. And what I'd like is if any of you have any uh, data, hard data, Randy needs data for his test his model because if he doesn't have the data, then he can't test. And so uh, if you get a chance, you can send him some data. Next slide, please. Uh, this is his, uh, Randy's uh, email address there. Like say if you have data, send him the data. He'd appreciate it. And I'd appreciate it because I know that uh, he is uh, somebody that uh, likes to take challenges, likes to uh, work with hard data, and if he makes an error, he's the first to admit it. And so, uh, so if you wish to help him out, uh, you can do that. So the next slide, please. Remember, you're working for the future. These are my two grandsons. They're a little bit older now. One's about as tall as I am now. And, uh, uh, but then I have to think you're, you're working for the future. Um, so if you can develop bees that don't have to be treated or treated less, and you're doing something positive for future generations. So next slide, please. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, feel free to ask. I might not know the answers. Maybe I know some people that do know the answers. 
And if I do, then I'll let you know. John, am I right? What? Am I right if I'm guessing you're not spending any time uh, with cutting drone? Uh, no, because I need the mites. Why, why should I kill mites? Mites are expensive. <laughs> mites are expensive. And you've got to have mites to function correctly. And, uh, the, uh, before, if I had the financial resources, I would have run a program where I would have also bred counties for high mite production. And then I would have done a test like Rock and Billy where you cross it. High my lines with the low light my lines, and then you can study the, what happens in the F1 and uh, the breakdown on it. But as a uh, professional beekeeper, I don't have the finances to do that. I would like to have done it, but uh, uh, that's why if somebody wishes to do it, I'm quite happy if they would do it because I inherited the results. Are there other questions yet? Don't hesitate to ask because, uh, sure. You had this uh, um, last slide where you uh, gave um, tips for selection criteria, no. and there was use or, or let natural selection operate. Um, right. but, but at the same time, you were um, telling that uh, one should maintain mite pressure, maintain no. the diversity, and also select for um, efficiency. I think. Yeah. No. So I would be interested. What concept of natural selection? Uh, behind that and maybe well, it's, in, my, in my case with the bond test it's the live and let die either they survive or they don't it's a, just regular natural selection and sometimes it's uh, important not to get in the way of uh, natural selection sometimes people think they're helping their bees and they're doing actually the opposite and I'm certain if uh, there weren't any beekeepers around we wouldn't have, the bees wouldn't have any problem with uh, varroa mites, fairly certain. But, uh, another question? Yeah, maybe to add, um, because you work in very different places on the earth, I, yeah. as I can tell from your talk, and, um, and the way your argument is, as if all bees surrounding the bees you were working with were only kept by beekeepers. But I guess in Chile, for example, the war was not as long as uh, here in Germany, Germany or France. No, it's a to do it fairly with, recent time. Uh, you had a wide co uh, colonies where actual natural selection were uh, operating. And uh, so I wonder, did that affect uh, the way you were working? or did you In, in Chile, we have a different, uh, different situation, a different uh, economic situation. Uh, in France, we, this is where we do most of the uh, uh, rural resistance uh, selection and there we work with populations that uh, I have beekeepers around me all the time and one of the comments I had from one of the beekeepers, he, he uses Zapistan, he says he can use this trip for about five years. He says, this, no, this is what he says, he says that uh, he just every year scrapes it off a little bit and then he cuts it in four and then he says he doesn't, uh, he, that he kills his mic problem. Uh, he's happy with that explanation. I think it's probably his queens that made it with some of our drones. But anyhow, that's the uh, uh, main thing, I guess, uh, like, like I say, with the natural, natural selection is that uh, you have to have the mic pressure there. As Rothman Bruller told me when I was a student, he said, John, uh, if you're selecting for disease resistance, you have to have the disease. If you don't have the disease, you can't select. It's as simple as that. Yes? Okay, the, uh, with the, uh, so like I can say, we were working at that time with about 400 some uh, colonies and we did the bond uh, method, the first bond test, uh, because we had no other, no, we didn't know any other way to treat. But uh, what I suggest now for beekeepers is that if you, if I ask you how many uh, counties everyone has put together in this room, you've probably got a lot more than uh, 500 counties. Maybe some will have one or two counties, maybe some will have 10 counties or things like that. But you can group your uh, resources and First of all, go in and, and your counties, and before you treat, look and uh, count. 
You might be surprised, and I say sometimes the Christian that maybe has only one out of each, maybe he has the best time. And uh, somebody that has maybe a couple hundred or five hundred counties, and maybe his uh, his counties don't have much with my resistance. And so it's uh, um, you have to adapt to your own specific uh, situation, and you have to realize that what might be might be resistance in one area, maybe not. He might be resistance in another area. <laughs> Um, uh, mic resistance is a lot more complicated than what we think. And, uh, uh, I started right down a little bit uh, my resistance mechanisms and uh, came up with about 22 different mic resistance mechanisms, but I think there's probably a lot more than that. And, but uh, there's a lot that we don't I know. Okay, John. Okay. And now we'll get into some important talks. <laughs>